Hello and welcome back to the MLB DFS Slate Breakdown for June 23rd. We are back as always. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to our video. Helps us out a ton. Allows us to keep giving us giving out all this content for free. If you're not already, also come join us at Line Star. It is only $29.99. Gets you access to all of our DFS stuff, the projections, the the optimizer, the tools. It also gets you access to Props AI for all the sports we cover. Come join us. It is the best deal in the industry. We also now do have a three-day free trial on the apps. If you go into the Google or uh, iPhone app stores, search Lionstar, you can do the three-day trial only through the app stores. Now, quick rundown on what we're going to cover today. We're going to go over yesterday's main slate, which was the day slate. Uh, just a quick review of those lineups, and then we're going to jump into tonight's uh, nice Friday night slate here. So let's get into it now. Uh, first, we'll get over to those perfect lineups. All right, so we got the DraftKings perfect lineup. We got Joe Ryan, three-man Padre stack, and then a two-man Guardian stack. Uh, pretty interesting slate yesterday. Ryan went absolutely nuts. We talked about how he was in a really good spot yesterday, and he absolutely was, and he delivered. The Padres went nuts with uh, 10 runs. Machado, Kim had a home run. Gary Sanchez had a home run, putting them all in the perfect lineup. So uh, it was a nice little slate there, and the winning lineup yesterday went to... MB Habs with 206.9 points, which was, you know, eight points higher, a little over eight points higher than uh, second place. So they did pretty well. They ate the chalk with Snell, which <laughs> makes total sense because Snell was absolutely crushing. And then they took Henry with a low price, which, you know, we locked, we talked about that a little bit too. I like that play as well. And then we had a five man Padre stack and two-man Cleveland with Buxton's two home runs in there. So a really nice lineup here. Really like how he played it out. I like the 5-2-1. Uh, that's kind of usually what I do on DraftKings is 5-2-1 or 5-3s. Uh, I generally stay away from a 5 and then 3 one-offs, but you know, occasionally I will depending on the slate. Um, let's see what the whistles go. Wu did... Oh, he snuck in, you know, two high price pitchers with Ryan and Snell and then went heavy Minnesota, which Minnesota was a great cheaper stack. Um, they just didn't get it done because Padres put up 10 runs and then Cleveland got it done for him as well. So once again, you, you can see very interesting five, two and one. So. That seems to be what a lot of the top players are doing these days is some sort of 5-2-1 or, or 5-3 stack. Now let's jump into FanDuel, see the FanDuel perfect lineup. And no surprise, Joe Ryan. We got three Padres in there, uh, two Minnesota guys, and two Washington players. So a lot of stacks here for uh, the perfect lineup on FanDuel. And the winning lineup for FanDuel, Blake Snell, again, no surprise. He absolutely crushed it. He just didn't score quite as much as uh, Joe Ryan, thus Joe Ryan going into the perfect lineup. But uh, being high-owned, it's no surprise that Snell's in the winning lineup here. And then we got a four man Padre stack, three man Minnesota, and Lane Thomas. So very nice uh, lineup there. Woogs took it there with 255.5 on a five game slate. Very, very good. All right. Now let's jump in and we can go over some ownership. Uh, we'll go over to DraftKings here. So we do have a 10 game slate. Uh, starts at 4.05 Pacific, 7.05 Eastern as normal. And this is a Colorado slate. So Angels are versus Colorado by far the highest game total of the night. Um, 
this Mets versus Phillies game, pay attention to the uh, to the weather. There is a chance of PPD there, or at least uh, in-game delay or late start. Something is going to go on there. It is one of the highest game totals of the night, so it might be interesting to take a shot on. But um, pay attention to weather. All right. Now, ownership-wise, we got Joe Musgrove coming in at 38%. Pretty uh, mid-tier price-wise, 8800 The one thing I would say with Musgrove is he just doesn't have a ton of K upside. You know, with his price up to almost 9 k it is a little difficult for me to get there based on, you know, what he's been doing. Last five starts, he's gone against some very good offenses. Yankees, Marlins, uh, Mariners, Guardians, and Rays. With that, 2.88 fit, but only a 19.5% K rate. Although that's not that surprising because pretty much all of the teams that we listed right there don't strike out a ton. So outside of the Mariners. So I think that uh, this 24% K rate is probably more where he's at. But once again, we're facing a team that doesn't strike out that much. So I don't love his upside. Combined K rate only 17.6%. Um, but he's going to work deep into the game. You know, I think his... Uh, 17 and a half outs line is like minus 160 or something like that. So Vegas thinks that he is going to go over that, meaning he's going to pitch at least six innings. Decent chance he gets to seven. Uh, but he's probably not going to strike a lot of guys out. So with that, his upside is limited. Scares me a little bit with him being the highest owned but at his price, I understand going there. Next, we got Chris Bassett versus the A's. Look, A's 25.3K% versus righties. Uh, Bassett has been just so hit or miss this year. Struggled versus Texas. Struggled versus Baltimore. Both away games. Great against Houston. Great against the Mets. Struggled against the Twins. He's had some real high highs. And real low lows. You don't really know what you're going to get here. Look, his FIP has not been good. His ERA over the last five, 6.84. But like we said, look, away from, uh, away at the Twins, away at the Mets, home against Houston, away against Baltimore, away against the Rangers. Rangers, very good offenses he's gone against, and most of them are away. So maybe not consider that recent performance quite as much coming back home against a poor offense i think you kind of gotta like bassett here uh but once again this is another guy that doesn't have huge k upside only a 22.5 percent k rate uh so i understand if you want to go there it is a great matchup and there's huge upside uh just you know, figure out what you want to do here. But uh, one thing is, I don't know if I would take both Musgrove or Bassett. I think there is a decent chance that one of them does not become in the perfect lineup or an optimal, uh, like a winning lineup. You know, they're very high owned and that lack of K upside does worry me. I would not be surprised if one of them only had, you know, say four Ks and that's just not going to get it done at their price. Um, Musgrove's line was, I think, 4.5 for Ks, whereas Bassett is like 5.5. All right, next we got Logan Webb, 10.4, 22% owned versus the Diamondbacks. This is another guy that doesn't have huge K upside. He does have a little bit more than both Musgrove and, and Bassett, but not much more. So um, with his higher ownership and higher salary, I find it very hard to go here against this Diamondbacks team, only striking out 18.8% and a very good versus righties. So I don't love it. Also, if you noticed, uh, Lion Star doesn't love it. Only a 16-point projection. Next, I, uh, Brian Bellow, 8,400. He is a lower-owned guy. White Sox do strike out 23.2%. Uh, the one thing he is averaging 25.6% less fantasy points win away. Now, his away games, Brewers, Braves, 
Angels, Yankees. Not necessarily the, you know, better teams to play when you're away. So that could have something to do with it here. Uh, this White Sox team, you know, at least they're finally kind of healthy. They are hitting okay. 161 ISO versus righties. But uh, Bellow's been super good lately. 3.12 FIP over his last five. 20% K rate. Another spot where not a huge upside, but at least you have a cheaper salary here. And he's 16 point projection, which is similar to Webb at 2K less. So I think you got to like that. Kodai Seneca, another guy versus the Phillies. Um, I've bet the unders on Seneca today. One, I think there's the weather issues. His line is at 6.K, 6.5K is I bet the under that. I also bet the under on outs. So I don't love Seneca today. Um, it's an okay matchup though, but one, he hasn't been great away to the weather issues. So I am probably not going there. Shane Bieber, 9.4K versus the Brewers. You know, they strike out a little bit. Bieber just doesn't have strikeout stuff anymore. So, uh... I don't really know what to do. Finally, his price is falling, which it should. And he's averaging almost 38% more fantasy points at home. So it is a little bit interesting. That offense doesn't scare me that much. Uh, Beaver is just not the guy that we used to think he was. Um, not a terrible kind of pivot off the high owned guys, though. He's in a very similar spot to, to them. Just way less owned. Uh, Clark Schmidt. Versus the Rangers, probably not going there. Uh, you know, Dunning, I think, is actually kind of an interesting one. He's super cheap. He's been decent. Worked six <laughs> six innings yesterday. His, uh, his high isn't super high. He's another guy with a limited uh, K upside, only 18% combined K rate. But I just don't trust these Yankees right now. They have not been great without judging that lineup. And I don't mind taking a salary savings and going with Dunning at low ownership and a super low price that would allow you to pay up for, you know, one of the higher price pitchers and get some good offense. So don't mind that. Uh, let's take a Giolito versus the Red Sox. Giolito, Red Sox are good versus righty, so I don't love that spot. Don't mind it a ton. Gilbert versus Baltimore. Another one where it's really hard for me to go there. Baltimore is just really good offense, and Gilbert doesn't have huge K upside and has struggled a little bit recently. Um, all right, and now let's take a look at the FanDuel ownership. So pitching pitching's kind of weird today. You know, not a ton of upside. Uh you may have to take one of Musgrove or Bassett on DraftKings. On FanDuel, they're absolutely both in play. Musgrove, 35%. Bassett, 24%. Logan Webb coming in after that. And then, you know, a total mix here. Uh, I don't mind Bellow whatsoever as a lower-owned price against the White Sox. Uh, lower-owned ownership percentage. And you know, medium price tag, lower price tag here. So don't mind that. Uh, France, we didn't go over, but he's been pitching very deep into games. His ERA has been low, but it's another guy that doesn't have huge K upside, but he is kind of interesting just because of how deep he has been working into games. Um, so you can do worse than there. 7,800 for Dunning. I don't know if I would go Dunning on... Uh, FanDuel, just because I'm not sure if he has the upside to get it done. Um, but a lot of the higher price guys today, we've talked about not really having upside anyway. So today is probably one of the days you could go for that and go for a little lower owned guy. All right, now let's head back to DraftKings and let's go over some stacks for the day. Now, ownership wise, it's going to be really interesting with the stacks today just because we know the angels are going to be super high owned as they are coming in you know on a 10 game slate you're going 113 percent owned for five guys that's uh quite some ownership there and one thing about freeland that i do have to bring up is that he is way better at home 
so weird, but he is like the one Colorado pitcher that just does better at home. Somehow he limits his slugging. He limits the OPS and gets it done a little bit at home. So just understand that if you're going in the chalk. Now, it is an absolutely great spot for the Angels. Freeland isn't that great of a pitcher. 5.4 FIP over the last five uh, but the other thing is it's like 80 degree temps in Colorado. So not only do you have nice weather, you also get that elevation bump. So it's no surprise that everybody is going to this game. They're in a decent spot. So I get it. Uh, more higher owned guys. We got the Mets, you know, much lower owned than uh, the Angels. And it's versus Walker, so I do get it. Walker, however, has pitched much better lately. The other thing here is remember there is uh, weather, so stay tuned to the weather. Uh, Blue Jays versus uh, James Cap. Cap's been decent lately, 4.0 FIP, 4.5 over the last 20. Uh, but Toronto can get to anybody, and they're at home. So I don't mind that whatsoever. Padres. I cannot believe Padres aren't higher owned. Look, they're against Patrick Corbin. He has 5.87 FIP over the last five, 4.72 over the last 20. But his OPS win away is 895. There are only eight hitters in the National League that have, have a higher OPS than that. And one of them is on the team, Fernando Tati. So... There is very good reason to want to stack the Padres in this. We know Corbin can get blown up, and when he does, he's usually good for six, seven, eight runs, and that bullpen isn't great. So I think you can absolutely go Padres tonight. Uh, you can also go Colorado. As we talk about a lot, I love going to that high-owned game, great hitting environment, but just go to the side that's not quite as high owned like look the lions in these games are like minus one and a half points or plus one and a half points so it's not a huge implied run total difference from colorado to uh the angels and they can absolutely win this game so i don't mind there it is against sandoval who is a better pitcher than freeland but freeland pitches better at home so I, I don't mind it, and Sandoval isn't used to pitching at that altitude. So don't mind going Colorado whatsoever. Uh, Oakland, kind of interesting just because Bassett has got blown up lately. And we know this offense kind of just keeps plugging around along, but they're just not having real high upside. Uh, Red Sox, Giolito has not been great lately. 5.29 FIP over his last five. Red Sox are good versus righty, so it makes a lot of sense there. Now let's go to the per higher projected own. No surprise, or sorry, projected lineups. No surprise that the Angels are all over it. We also got the Diamondbacks here, which I don't mind. Diamondbacks keep hitting. Uh, the one thing, though, is it is in San Francisco, so there's likely not going to be home runs, or very many home runs. And it's more of a pitcher-friendly park, so I don't love it quite as much. Uh, Texas versus Clark Schmidt. He's been okay. 4.03 FIP over his last five, 4.5 over the last 20. This Texas offense is really good. So I definitely like that. Um, Baltimore, we haven't talked about, Look, Gilbert hasn't been great lately. 5.3 FIP over his last five. He, however, is a very good pitcher. So I would expect that to kind of revert back to the, uh, the norm you know, rather quickly, but uh, who knows what happens tonight. JP France. France is one of these pitchers that he keeps having a higher FIP than ERA, kind of like uh, Tony Gonzalez, and just keeps making it work. So even though the FIP is elevated, he's been limited in runs. That's the only reason I don't like the Dodgers. Um, I don't mind the Dodgers. I think you can always play them, uh, but they're just real expensive for uh, kind of a meh matchup um mariners gibson has been good lately 3.09 fip 3.92 over the last 20 but we know he can get slammed and when he does it's usually with a lot of home runs so seattle is a little interesting here um went over 
went over the pods. Don't need to do it again. Uh, all right, value side, we got Oakland, we got White Sox. Both are interesting. Both we've talked about. Ceiling wise, Philly's popping up. Look, Seneca, Seneca has been way different at home versus away. He's been much worse away. Uh, there is also, you know, weather issues. So if there's a mid game delay and Seneca gets out a little earlier, you're going to have this uh, Mets bullpen to deal with as long as, you know, it doesn't get PPD'd. Um, but you know, isn't very good, frankly. So I don't mind going to Philly. Don't mind going to the Angels. Don't love the Diamondbacks today. Texas is always in the equation these days. And then also uh, Padres. So there's a lot of different ways you can go in this slate. Uh, Padres with ownership are absolutely one of my favorites. The Rockies are one of my favorites. I think the Red Sox are an interesting lower-owned one to go after. Um and then the Astros. Astros haven't been hitting very well, but the Dodgers pitching right now is just not very good. So I think that's an interesting one. Then uh, keep an eye on that Mets and Phillies weather because I think that game is in play on either sides of the ball if, uh, if you want to go that way. So that will do it for us today. Happy Friday, you guys. I will see you next week. Good luck tonight. Good luck over this weekend. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to our vids. And I will be back next week. Have a great weekend.